Hey guys, Ron Douglas here. I wanted to make this quick video for you to talk about this new thing coming, the Gmail slap. <laughs> Gmail and uh, Yahoo Mail uh, requiring certain things. So they have announced that they're putting new protections in place to keep inboxes safer and less spammy, which also means if you're sending bulk emails, there's some guidelines that you have to adhere to to uh, make sure you get inboxed, right? So it's a good thing. It's actually a good thing, I think, because the more you can uh, get rid of spammers and people that are not proceeding in a business-like way with email, the uh, the better it is for people that are doing the right thing, the legitimate email senders, the people sending emails that people actually want to receive. So the more they can clean that up, the better it is for you and I. So as it says here, you can read through this on uh, Aweber. I think all the uh, autoresponder services have instructions on what to do, but I'm going to walk you through uh, what you have to do in this video. So the first thing is you have to use a real domain name. You can no longer use a Gmail or a free email account. It has to be your domain. So I send emails from rondouglas.com, ron at rondouglas.com. I send emails from my other site, webinarcon.com. So those are the two primary ones I'm, I'm sending from. I also send emails from uh, some of my cooking niche-related stuff from foodpals.com. But it's always from a real uh, domain name. So if you want to get a professional email with a domain name, let's go over to... Uh, Namecheap, and you click on uh, business email, and then from there, for as little as a dollar a month, you can uh, get an email box hosted on Namecheap with your own domain name. First, you might have to buy the domain name, so you know it helps to have your name. That's always a good thing, right? If you can get your name, jacksmith.com, whatever your name is, you can get it. Uh, otherwise, pick a domain name and then. They have uh, tutorials here on what to do. You can reach out to their support. They have a live chat, but it's really simple. Um, and you can get a free trial, but you just go there and get the email account and they'll host your email account um, for you with your domain name. You, If you have a domain name already, you can add the email account and attach it to your uh, domain name there. So that is the first thing you want to do. And once you've done that, the uh, second thing you want to do is authenticate your emails with a custom DKIM. So this gets a little more complicated. But as it says here, it shows you how to do it. It says uh, DKIM is like a digital signature for emails, a way for the sender to prove they're really sending the email and that it hasn't been changed by anyone in between. So the kind of signify that you're the one that actually sent this email and it came directly from you and hasn't been altered in any way. So your di digital signature for your email. So if you click this uh, link right there, it walks you through how to set it up. So the first thing you want to do is verify your, your domain name with your autoresponder. So I'm using Aweber. So I want to go to... Um, Let's see, Aweber, and you go to uh, List Options, List Settings, and you would go down here where it says From Name and Email Address. I already have mine verified for this account, but you would, um, if you wanted to verify it, you would say Manage Email Addresses, and um, you can have them send you a verification. So let's, uh, let's add Ron at rondouglas.com to this one. And just to show you what it looks like, check your inbox. You put your email, the one that you plan to use, the uh, business email that you just purchased or just set up. And then um, you check your inbox. Let's go over to the inbox. So there's the email from Aweber. And I can click verify that uh, email address. And then in the email is now verified. So that's... Uh, the first part of that, so let's hit refresh just to see that that email is verified. So now, 
the next part is to add the DKIM to your hosting account for your email. So if you have with Namecheap, like I just showed you, you can contact their, their support to have this added. Um, you probably could just send it to them and they'll add it for you. But if you come here and see the uh, setup instructions, and I know this is complicated. You could pause this video, rewind it, go back, but it's not that difficult. It literally takes you like less than 10 minutes to do. But um, it just looks complicated, but you have to figure out which page to go to. Which so I'm walking you through step-by-step step in this video. Uh, I hear the customer support tickets opening now. Like, I couldn't figure this thing out. Go back and watch this video again. <laughs> All right, so what you want to do is add a C name record to set up the DKIM in your DNS manager. So your hosting could show you, your hosting account could show you where to find that. Or if you have a webmaster that can do this for you, it's just a required step to kind of prove that you're legitimate for um, your emails to get through. So I'm going to go over to my hosting account for that domain name. Uh, C panel. Log in there. And I want to go to domains. So yeah, go to zone editor. And then you want to make under that domain name, you want to make a new C name record. Or as I said, if you're using a email service like provided by Namecheap, you can contact their chat support and just tell them, hey, you know, you got to enter these C name records with my email account and they'll do it for you. But I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. So you click right here. That will copy that one. So you got to do all three of these, right? So first you click that first one. It copies it. Plop that in right there. And then go back. Get the next one there, copy the value, put that in right there, add the C name record, and then that's added to your domain name. So if you go to manage, you should see it in there somewhere. I have a bunch of them, obviously. Let's see, C names. Yeah, there it is. So now, if you come back here and hit refresh, the status should change. There you go, boom, installed. And then you just do it for the other ones as well. So let's uh, let's do that again. C name record. Copy the next one. Boom, boom, boom. Copy that one. Boom, add the C name record. And let's do the last one. Copy that. Copy the next one. Add C name record. Hit refresh. refresh again oh okay now it's the refreshed it again and, and it went probably takes a few seconds but so now all three of those are done so i have my dkim set up so the last thing you want to do is you want to set up the dmark policy and here it says you can go to uh this link right here and you want to add another like dns record so it walks you through how to do it, but I'm, just, I'm going to show you how to do it here in this video as I'm actually doing it. So you want to create a, a text record with this name and this value, right? So copy that name. So I'm going to go back to my domain here, cPanel, and I'm going to go to manage. And again, this is something else you could have um, your host do for you. You want to add a record, I'm going to add a text, a TXT, a text record, and the zone name, I'm going to put that as DMARC, 
and the um, where did it go? Demark as the name and the value here. I'm gonna add that as the value. Copy that over. Let's go back here. Add that as the text record. Let's leave it like that. And let's see if that works out. Okay, we have that text record entered there for the D mark. All right, now here on this page, it tells you once you've done that, you go to verify it. Okay, one thing I noticed I did wrong was um, this right here has to be your email account, right? So I had to go in and edit that. So when you copy that in, make sure that's your email account and not this sample one that they're using. So once you do that, you enter that in and then you wanna go verify it. So you come here to this verification site and then you enter in your domain name and click inspect the domain. Great job, DMARC is installed. So those are the steps that you must take. That was the third step. And then you can read through these other important factors, keep spam complaints low, make it easy for people to unsubscribe. If, if you're using an autoresponder, there's always a link in the email anyway, so you're all good with that. Um, and then you can reach out to their support and get help if you need it or whoever your uh, autoresponder services, they should be able to help you. But these are three things that you need to get done if you're sending emails out, bulk emails out to a bunch of people you need to have it done, I believe, by before February 1st. So don't send any emails out in February until you have this done. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, you can reply if you have any questions. And uh, it's a little technical, but really all I did was copy and paste, and it took me about 10, 15 minutes. And I just click around. So it's just knowing where to click, right? It's not, I didn't code any of this stuff. I didn't have to. You know, if this happened, then that happened, that type of coding and relational uh, type of uh, technical stuff. It was really literally just following these instructions and copying and pasting. So it's not that difficult, but make sure you get that done. So I wanted to uh, leave you with that, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.